Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today we're going to do block two of our penguin. There it is. And I am going to use a different applique sheet. This is for my sister. I was trying to explain this on the telephone to her. Now I bought it a long time ago. They are still available. And Missouri Star Quilt has it on their website for $14.95. Amazon has it for $12.80. Fat Quarter Shop has it for $19.78. And the company is BearThreadDesigns.com. That's their website. They have it. And they actually have the three different sizes because they're the ones that made it. So they've got the 13 by 17, which is what this one is. It's $14.99. They've got the 18 by 20 for $21.99. And the 27 by 30 for $48.99. You also get a free pattern in this um, kit here, the applique pressing sheet. Now, just to give you a little bit about it, it is double-sided. It's made from ultra-high temperature fabric and coated with non-stick polylon. And the uses on the website say that it can be used as a craft sheet, painting surface, ironing board protector, a baking sheet, where you would put your shrink arch, your clay projects, your salt dough ornaments, those kind of things you would put on top of this in the oven. And it'll explain it to you in the directions and everything. Now when we start, I've taken the sticky side, the paper off of one side, and I put it down on my fabric and I rub it with my finger. This is my salvage, so I'm being real careful because I don't want any those little holes in it. And then all I do is cut this. These are the eyes. And then I'll take it over to the ironing board and I'll iron it. So that's it. That's all I'm going to do with all of these different pieces of fabric. Let's say that you went ahead and you decided this is where you wanted to put your pattern on your fabric. But now you're looking at it and you're thinking, oh no, I don't really want it positioned there. I really want it to go at an angle. So as long as you have not ironed it yet, you can take this off of your fabric as many times as you want until you've ironed it. Once you've ironed it, the adhesive sticks to the fabric. So if I wanted to move it a little bit over here instead, then I would just do that before I put the iron to it. And I've always used this cover sheet, and the reason for that is because I don't want to accidentally have any glue or have my pattern upside down by mistake and iron it. You don't want to have that happen. And like I said, once you put that on there, that glue is sticking to that fabric. And let me do my next piece. And I'm going to go ahead and move it over a little bit too. I tried to kind of match them up color-wise or stripe-wise, or whatever you want to say. So the red one is here at the top, even though these are opposite directions. So I'm going to do... No, I'm not going to... I'm going to go the opposite direction, because these are actually shaped different. I guess if I go this way... Let's see. The green... Let's just do this right here. There we go. And cover that one up. Turned it. Now this is the one that's finished, and see it's stuck on there now. I'd have a hard time getting that off. I mean I could probably pry it off, but then I'm not sure if I'd rip my pattern. So those are done, and I'm going to cut them all out. I've already ironed all this of them. This sheet is not as light as the last sheet. It's a little bit darker, but my fabric's dark so I can see through it for placement. I turned the light off because it was glaring on this corner right here. So the Body goes first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, after I get done doing the body, let's see here, the body. I'm trying to see my fabric right here. I've had to shut my light off. I'm going to barely see. I probably should have put my 
white on top of my black before I put the black down now that I think about it in case you guys want to do that Like I said, until I've ironed it, it can all be moved. Keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the... Let's see here. This is where the feet would go down here. Antlers up here. Whoops. I bet you I don't... Yeah, I do. Okay. Antlers up there. So that's got plenty of room for the fabric. That's what I was concerned about. Let's see, the big part at the bottom for the hands. The beak. The eyes. Alright. Hopefully it's not too much shadow and y'all can see all of this. Let me take a look real quick. Yeah, you can. Do a space right here. So. I have the first penguin already embroidered. So when I get finished here, I'm going to embroider this one. Let's see. And then if I've got time, because I'm watching my time here, I'll go ahead and I'll show y'all the embroidery work. I tell you what, when I was looking at these eyeballs on my last one, they're not even as big as this, but when I was looking at them, I was thinking, you know what, I could probably give a pair of glasses to one of these penguins. Wouldn't hurt at all. All you gotta do is just embroider around there, put a little loop on the nose, and that looked pretty neat. Went ahead and I took the paper off of these things here because they were sticking on me. This one's even stuck to itself on these four here on the corner, just the legs. And they got to go underneath here. Let's see if I can lift that. That's the only problem is that fabric sticking on itself. There we go. I need to move that over. Let's see, when I have to grab it, that's I'm trying to think what I could grab it with. Hmm. Let's see if my this will help any at all when it comes to doing that. chewing gum on you. Let's see, I need to put that up a little higher because that part right there, I don't know if you guys can see it, it needs to go up underneath there. Okay. Let's see if I do this one over here. Yep, that's good. All right, now let's do the antlers. It's a shame it doesn't slide on this thing. That'd be really neat. You could slid until you patted it down. It slides on the back side, but not on the sticky side. There we go. That's good. Now I'll take the wings off. All right, here we go. 
Now these kind of go by the side. it kind of yeah well nope, that's good it's almost like you can't see where they detach from each other from the, the body It looks pretty good. I kind of want this foot out just a little bit flatter. I don't know if I can get it out or not. Let's see here. Well, that's too far down on the fabric. My quarter inch will eat it up. There's my quarter inch right there. Okay, that's a lot better. I guess that's pretty good. Alright, let's just put our iron to it now. That's going to be tricky, taking the antlers off and transferring it to the fabric. But we're going to give it a minute here to cool off. All right, I tried to pick it up, and the little pieces will not stay put. So let's see if I can get the rest of it off here. And we will just take what we can. And we'll go from there. stuff is really really stuck okay that helps a lot a little bit better there we go let's move our sheet now keep in mind as long as it's not ironed on we're fine Tried to fold back over myself right there. Okay. So this looks pretty good. Maybe I didn't leave it on there cool enough. Let's try the antlers again. I think that goes over here. There we go. There we go. That's not too bad. I guess I'm in too much of a hurry. Pretty good to me. I'm gonna do the beak first 
and your my rule of thumb is I work on whatever is below so this is below the eyes so I'm gonna do it first and the reason being when I come down and I'm gonna go up close against the blue eye when I get ready to use the blue if I want to use the and I don't know if I'm going to or not the quilting stitch it'll cover that otherwise you'd have to stop when you got to the corner then you have to turn around and start again over here I don't want to do that I want to get the whole thing in here and it won't be a problem I've already done the other one like that so you always bring up your bottom thread and then you go into place when you start out bring up your feed dogs so that they're not pulling your fabric because this is free motion quilting you're doing it yourself you go into place to lock it and then just slowly move and I'm just going on the edge hopefully my hands are not in the way just take your time I'm using a 12 needle you can use smaller if you want which would be 11 I just went over the top of that and I'm gonna go ahead and go around it again and that's it and cut the thread going into a lot of detail about my foot or anything in here I will make a video specifically for embroidery right now this is the way that I do it I've switched my foot out in case you've noticed already this is a regular foot but it's an open toed so I can see it the last foot I was just using was an open toed embroidery foot I will be showing the embroider on this machine as well as the vintage but I'm trying to keep my videos at 20 to less minutes. Now I'm selecting the program that I want, which is called a quilting applique stitch. I did a straight stitch to start out with. This is how I pre prevent having to go back and forth. And if you've ever done any kind of embroidery like this, where you're using your, your own little utility stitches on your sewing machine, you know what a problem is to go back and forth when you've chosen something. That's why I do it this way so that you don't have to go back and forth. Now my length is at two and my width is at two. And it's gonna be at a lot of up and down so I've got my foot so that when it stops it will automatically go up. And then I just take my time because this is a lot of round little corners. Like I said, I don't have much time left on this video, but I just wanted to show you a little bit here. Hopefully you can see it. And what you want to do is you want to pay attention, and I'll show you why. The last stitch went to the left and went back into the same stitch and now it's coming forward so if you count it you'll know when it goes to the left so that was one stitch two stitch and now it went over so when you get to a corner you will recognize it and you'll know so you'll know when to stop or when to go forward or, or move backwards freely with your um, with your flywheel there you get to the end or a corner and you want it to be smaller that's when you would be adjusting the little thing that goes to the left a little stitch that goes to the left because that can be made smaller or larger depending on where you are at if you were going down to towards a tip of a triangle you would want to go smaller when you got there you wouldn't want to go bigger or you wouldn't want to go the same size
and it won't always be perfect and you don't need to worry about it being perfect think about how your fabric's going to look after it's washed it's going to shrink a little bit it's going to pull on the stitches That's it for right now. Well, it's all finished. There we go. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.